Off we go to new and exciting things. So here we have uh, the first of what is probably, or hopefully going to be a recurring segment of just uh, trying random Zelda Classic quests. Um, I'm doing this as filler because it is currently January 6th and I only recorded two videos for December uh, due to a move and just generally being busy. So we're going to be catching up with this because I still don't have a setup to actually do Link's Awakening. And then uh, we might do more of this after catching up just for the hell of it. So uh, I have plenty of different quests I could pick from. Um, we're certainly not going to be doing this one. Um, you know, this one. But uh, what we are going to be doing... <laughs> I like the name already. So uh, I picked this one because I've seen the name of this thing a million times and I've never played it. And we've gone too far. Uh, man, there's some laggy frickin'... I, I stopped holding the up key. Okay, yeah, there's there's some very laggy menus in this program. I don't know what the hell's wrong with it. So yeah, this is, uh... No. This is, uh, Followed to Honky Pig. And, uh, this is what it says the author's name is. It's now listed on Pure ZC as Wild Bill. But, um... The reason I chose this one aside from its ridiculous name, is because uh, this is the second quest ever added to purezc.com. Um, the first one was also by Wild Bill. Uh, this is from April 2002, so this predates uh, Victim's Adventure 1, and this is a 190 quest, so it's going to be fairly limited in what it can do, I think. But uh, right off the bat, I'm already kind of noticing some interesting things, so... I actually don't know what's up with that map in the top left. Um... The fact that it has, like, multiple compass points, I don't know if that's just drawn straight onto the map, or if that's something to do with the BS overworld, because I've never used one of those. But anyway, um... We're gonna be getting dialogue like this throughout the game. I am probably not going to be reading most of it out loud. Of course, I still have my, like, Link to the Past sound font. Okay, so we don't have sword beams. But yeah, I, I played, like, two seconds of this quest just to make sure that it was working right, and, uh, like, that the sound balance was okay. I'm already actually somewhat impressed by the graphics in here. It might not look like much, but this is a 190 quest, and those have a lot of restrictions on them. You don't have that many tiles to work with, and I've never really tried doing anything too complex with, like, pallets in 190. I just know that they're kind of a pain in the ass to work with. So, I'll be pointing out uh, anything along the way that I feel is worth pointing out. But, uh, I am seeing that uh, we're using what appears to be a mix of BS graphics and new first, I think. Because I definitely recognize this shoreline as being, like, the Victip's Adventure shoreline, um, which was just from the BS tile set. But the rest of the graphics look like they're similar to Mitch, which was the... I think it's usually referred to as New First. Um, it's essentially kind of like a revamped Game Boy game tile set, so like Link's Awakening and the Oracle games. But, uh, anyway, we've got music from Kirby Superstar, which is always a plus. So far, all the graphics look like they, uh, are actually set up properly. Oh. Was not expecting the music change. Now, I'm playing this in 183, so does that mean we've got... Are we going to be getting continue warps? No. Okay. Anyway. I'm just going to kind of point out stuff whenever I... Oh. Okay. Um, I wanted to hear that mini for a minute because that is the same one I used for the shops in Mitch, but it sounded a little bit better. Okay, so I assume that is probably a war. What song is this again? I know I've heard it before, I just can't place which... I assume it's a Zelda game, I can't place which one it's from. 
or be some weird cave into Forest of Doom. Well, I guess I'm going to be going in the Forest of Doom then. It's probably up there, but, uh... Or is this going to be a Let's Play money-making game? Eh, sure. I'll give it a shot. Let's go... left. And I picked... well, okay. I'm not going to be doing that again. So, this is considered an overworld. So yeah, I guess this is because... yeah, it's showing the Triforce in the subscreen. But the map is only 8x8, so I guess this is what the game considers a BS Overworld D-map. I've never actually used one of those, I don't know what they do. And here we have one screen of different music. And let me just make sure there's no hidden items under the Armoses. Nope. So yeah, I know most of the capabilities of 190 pretty well because of how often I used it back in the day. So, I can, uh, always kind of use that to determine what's possible. If I ever, like, don't know what to do, I'll at least kind of know what my available options are. Yeah, this is actually oddly well-assembled. Like, it's nothing, Im like, massively impressive, but it's a hell of a lot better than Victip's Adventure 1. So I'm assuming the uh, person who made this either was older than I was, because I was, like, 13, or had experience in, like, game-making before this, because, uh... Uh, it's just, it's little touches. It, it, it looks well-assembled. Like, right here, like, even this room right here, I'm actually kind of impressed by, because of the, uh, border around the room, because 190 didn't have layers, so you couldn't just have, like a ground tile that's like these diamond floor tiles and then add the borders over in layers. You had to have a specific one. Like this block I'm standing on right now is a floor tile with a border specifically going around the top and left sides and like the corner of the bottom right. And that takes a lot more tiles than you might realize. And I think you're restricted to like, I don't remember if it's 255 or if it's about 500 per combo sheet. So you have to be really mindful of what you do. I don't remember how many combo sheets you have access to in a quest either. It's not very many. Also, for the record, um, in 190, there is no op... Okay, is this a walkthrough wall? No. Also, freeform dungeons. So wait, hold on, is this... Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> I'm gonna keep repeating myself here, but yeah, this is... This, I've, I've already seen more effort in this game than, like, even what I've put into, like, BA2, honestly. Because we have a dungeon room that isn't a perfect square, which I pretty much never did. Um, because you have, like, an easy template where you can just make a perfect square room. Um, we also have multiple doors in the same wall, which I have done a couple times, but... So here, here, here's the thing, like, in Zelda Classic you have multiple D-map types that have different properties, and right here, because you're disappearing behind this tile on the edge of the screen, that means this must be a dungeon screen, not a cave screen, because caves don't have those overhead layers. And it's also doing the extra step when you go into a room. And you can't change direction when you're on the side of the screen like that. So basically what they had to do was... Um, like when you go into this screen... Is it just... Which doors are opening? So yeah, these two are actually... Proper doors, I believe. Shutter doors, because that's the only way that you can make them open like that. And then these two on the right are just actually drawn on, because otherwise it would center them. So yeah, I, I, I'm going to keep finding random things to point out, and I'm going to nerd out over them and use a lot of terminology that people probably won't underst understand, but uh, yeah, this is, this is actually really good. Not what I was expecting from a game of this name. <laughs> 
So anyway, let me go see what's in that chest. I could probably continue warp back, but uh, I don't want to make the enemies respawn. Not that they were that hard to deal with, but whatever. So I wonder what this tile set is called. Because this is not bad looking. This is this is still the new first style. Because I recognize the walls and the doors, but I think the floor tiles and stuff are different. For some reason, I don't remember there being a huge community for this program back in 2002, but I guess that's around the time that I first got into it, so... I probably just kind of missed out on most of that. And of course we have the, uh, this is before they introduced the concept of the new enemy tiles, so everything is kind of locked into the same number of frames that the uh, Zelda 1 enemies had. So you have stuff like the ropes not actually facing you when they charge at you and that kind of stuff. Oh, are we getting the hammer in this level? Huh. Seems like an overpowered item to get early on. Anyway, that was a red dark knot. Would this count as a suspicious wall? I don't really want to waste it, but it might be. I might come back to that if I get desperate later. Yeah, the Stealthos is kinda... What did I just get damaged by? Oh, the sand. I forgot. You can have damaging sand. I uh, I might have used that myself a few times. Okay, so it looks like we probably want to be bombing through the right wall in there. Well, you know, actually having an indication of some sort instead of just making the player guess. Once again, doing better than what I did in my quests. And good old screen 80. This looks similar to the standard screen 80, but it's got an extra little nubby hole pointing down and it's got some spider webs. And yeah, we're getting the hammer in level 1. That's really weird. This will probably be my weapon of choice then, because the hammer does uh, 4 damage per hit, as opposed to the... I'm assuming this is the wooden sword? I can't really tell. But, uh, but yeah, that, if this is the wooden sword, it does uh, only one damage. Okay, now if I, if I remember correctly, there's no hammer flag in 190, so I don't think there's any way I could get anything from pounding these in. I'm going to be surprised if I do. That, however, is a possibility. Because that was an Armos item flag. You know, in a pot. This is Zelda Classic, it makes perfect sense. Alright, so yeah, let me not stop and uh, smell the roses on every single screen if I can help it. I. Oh, nope, this is off color. I probably want to go that way though. I wonder what I might do in here. We'll always try walking into the wall before bombing it, just in case. Oh, that's kind of neat. So that's an eyeball, or not an eyeball, that's a, that's a statue combo right there. But it's part of the wall. So, okay. Statues shoot fireballs, but usually you make them actual statues. I've not seen anyone make them as a wall before. Is this one also movable? No. Are you going to be statue combos? Looks like apparently not. And okay, I might be able to go down here? No. That was a waste of a bomb. I would like to know how to visit that screen though, because it definitely exists. Mm, my 
about to waste my last bomb. Nope, okay. Oh, oh that was weird looking. Okay, I will take that. I don't know what this song is either. I'm kind of uh, tempted to check the MIDI info. Also, I'm hoping this is recording properly, because right now I'm playing the game, like, I, I have the preview window open right next to the game, and it seems to be lagging the fuck out. So I hope that's just the preview and not the actual recording quality, because that would be kind of bad. My setup should be okay. I can't record off of console right now, but nothing else has really changed. Other than the fact that I'm capturing audio straight from the computer instead of just kind of having it picked up through the microphone. That's because I don't actually know if the speakers on this monitor work very well. By which I mean I'm pretty sure they don't. I just didn't feel like dealing with it. So, I'm guessing the screen up and right from me is a boss. I don't know if I want to do that yet. And 190 doesn't have boss keys, so we're not going to have to worry about that. Probably don't need to push any of this. I, I like the uh, stomach grumbling noise, that's good. Also, uh, I'd like to point out, like, these, these are just, uh, like, these tiles right here are part of the tile set, I believe. Like, I don't think these were custom made. But, um, 190 also doesn't have animations. You can add animations to items, but not, like, just actual tiles in the, in the, like, in the overworld. So, when you have stuff like this, this is a result of, uh, palette cycling. Basically, you have to have... Uh, directions for like specific colors within a palette to actually cycle to different colors and you have to set up like the entire C set that way and it's really really stupid so not giving credit to the quest maker for that one because it was part of the tile set anyway but I always thought those were kind of jank <laughs> maybe not jank but like, overly complicated for no reason. Okay, I'm gonna try bombing straight up from the suspicious wall guy, because it did actually look kind of suspicious, and I need to get over there. Yep, there we go. Keeping an eye out. If, uh, okay, no. So I believe this is going to be a mirror image of the other side of the dungeon here. Yep, rupee room. Indeed. Might have been able to go through the top wall on that one, I don't know. That looks like a bomb wall if I've ever seen one. Yo. Yo. Mm. Yeah, kind of figured as much. But I guess I had to do it this way because I don't have the boomerang, so I wouldn't have been able to kill him from far away. So, actually, I think I now have access to the boss because I just needed a regular key. But let's keep going anyway. Bombs are always nice. Ah, we do get the boomerang. Okay, cool. Also an overpowered item, even just in the uh, basic, like, level one state. Oh, oh, is he now? We've apparently missed a room in the middle. No, it says I've been there. Is that a different D map? Weird. Let me check that. Okay, 
What's the, it's north from this screen. Have I been up here? Oh, I guess I haven't. Weird, it looked like I had. And, okay, so... I guess we go down from the boss door room to get that. I'm now realizing that the uh, commentary here has turned 100% into, let me go here and do this. Do we have a different tile on these? Oh, that doesn't want to hit anyway. I think you can have broken dark nut shields in 190, but I don't remember if there's a way to set them with different tiles after you've done that. I think they look the same. Maybe, no, I don't remember. It's been too long. Um, I need to keep an eye on how long I've been recording this, and a uh, YouTube comment notification popped up in the bottom right of my screen, and it says, uh, five minutes in, and this is the I... dot dot dot. Um, and so I can't actually see how long I've been recording, so I should probably get rid of that message at some point. Let's do that after I beat the level. So, the main man is weak to the hammer, allegedly. Hmm, how do we get over there? Maybe if I kill all these, something will happen. I don't know what. Yes, it will. Okay, cool. This was actually a very well thought out dungeon. I'm I keep saying I'm surprised, but like, yeah, that, that was actually pretty good. And Domain Man is an Aquamentus. He's not weak to the hammer, it's just the hammer does a lot of damage. Also, the Aquamentus is apparently Agonim for some reason, but okay. And I believe that finishes the level up. We've seen every screen here. Stupid YouTube notification. And we're good. Okay, that was cool. Um, I still have time to possibly do another dungeon or two, depending on how far they're spread out. So I guess the red dots on the map are just where all the dungeons are. Again, I'm not sure if that's just the way the map is drawn within the game's files, or if that's some kind of D-map thing you can do, because I don't think there's any setting to make multiple compass points like that. Anyway, um, we don't want to gamble again. I might be able to buy something at the shop, though. Steal something got to ya. I don't know what that means. Um... Shield is whatever. Arrows are good if I have a bow. I don't know when I'm getting a bow. Eh, I guess I'll go. I'm curious if there's an under combo on this chest. There is. <clears throat> so that chest I think was blocked by like a tree that I had to burn. I don't have the candle yet, so... There should be a... Hammer stump back at the beginning, though. Yeah. Also, for the record, I've noticed these a few times and I never drew any attention to them. There's various signposts. You might wonder why you can't read those. Um, there's no interactable objects up until, like, scripting was a thing. Like, there's never a case where you can, like, walk up to a thing and press A to read it until scripting became a thing in, like, 250, so that's out of the question. You can have readable signs if you put a warp tile in front of it and send you to another screen with text on it, but there's already a warp on this screen, and you can't have more than one warp per screen. I think that's been the case with, like, every other sign I've seen. There's always, like, a door you can go in. Is 
a weird palette on these Moblins. They're a hell of a lot better looking than the black ones in Mythic's Adventure, though. Uh, sure, I'll take that. Anything else in the, uh, vaguely Final Fantasy-esque sounding forest? Don't really need that. Why am I... Why am I hammering bushes? I don't know. Also, notice the lack of, uh, leaves that fly off when you cut the bushes. I'm kind of used to those, just from... BA3 stuff, but, uh, yeah, that was not a thing in 190 either. Yo. I think it's funny how there's, like, 4 million things that were added between 190 and 192, and then the jump from that to 210 was basically just let's add MP3 support, and... Okay, this is hookshot, I guess. Um, they're ad they added MP3 support, and I think they made like... Din's Fire and Nehru's Love Work. And that's about it. And they also fucked up the way that midis play, and the version is basically unusable because of it. And then the jump from that to 250 is, let's just add everything in the entire world. Eh. Okay. Okay, so this is come back with the bracelet. For a second, I thought it was, um, keep pushing random blocks until you find the one that moves, but no, it's not. I guess that's a level over there, then. And nothing seems to be impeding my progress to get to it, so... That looks like a ladder. That looks like boots. I'm curious. I want to know if I can damage boost over there. Can I get the Octoroks to appear down here? Or are they always stuck up there? Because there's no enemy placement flags in this version. Randomly, they should appear down here if I try enough times, but maybe they're programmed to not appear on the border of the screen like that. Hmm. Well, how many hearts do these do anyway? Two. Okay, so I cannot take more than one hit from those. Let me, uh... Oh, well, I gotta heal anyway. I don't know if there's actually bomb recoil in this game, so let's let's find out. Yep, okay. Oh, uh, what? Okay, so there's a tile I don't want to touch somewhere. Oh. Okay. Now that's a Big Dips Adventure puzzle if I've ever seen one, except also kind of better thought out than mine usually were. And this is not a screen 80. This is actually a cave, so where am I going to appear if I continue? Was that an entrance exit warp? That looks like an entrance exit warp. So I should reappear here if I F6. Get my health back, yeah. I could just save warp and appear at the beginning of the game, but fuck it. Oh, actually, no, I think I need to. So we're gonna have to walk back, that's fine. Oh yeah, I forgot! It's 190, we can't set, like, save points. It always takes you to the title screen, just like BA2 does. God, I forgot about that. Too big of a deal, though. Let me actually make sure that these are pit or that these are, I guess, ladder-only combos is what these would be. Yeah, these are. They couldn't be warps because there's already a warp down there. So yeah, I get the ladder and then I can cross these. 
They're basically water tiles, but not quite. Anyway, moving on. Now that my expectations have been raised for this quest, will uh, level 2 meet them or will it disappoint me? I'm guessing it will probably not disappoint me. Uh. Oh. Okay. Well, I got t one second of Tetris music and then Zelda Classic crashed, so I guess it's a good thing I did a save warp. What the fuck? Why did that happen? <laughs> okay, getting that opened up again. Random things that. Check stub. Okay. Thankfully, no progress was really lost here. That was really dumb. I uh, very much hope that doesn't happen again. That concerns me, because that can't be a quest problem. I don't think there's a way to make a quest that would crash the game like that. That was just Zelda Classic deciding that it didn't feel like working today. Okay. Why is level 2 crashing the game? Um, let me try the small window, even though I know that's not going to do anything. Bear with these, like, fucked up visuals here for a second, and, uh, let me just get back into the dungeon and see if it does it again. I fully expect it to, but I can't for the life of me imagine why. What could you possibly do in a 190 quest that would crash the game like that? Is it just a bad MIDI? Like, what? Okay, let's try this again. Okay. As soon as the MIDI starts, is it gonna crash? Yes. Why? Okay, I now need to test this. Random things, that. Alright, uh... We know it was Tetris. Village... Okay, so, let's play the level 1 music. It doesn't say what it is. Let's play the level 2 music. No, okay, okay, fine, let's play the level 3 music. Alright, moment of truth. That MIDI crashes the fucking game, what the hell? Okay, um... That's incredibly weird. I'm assuming the game is passworded? I can't open it in ZQuest, right? No, it's passworded. Okay, so I think the game might be unplayable in this version. Um, I'm going to mess around a bit and see if I can get it to load in a different version, but that would require me to play through that level again, I think. I don't know. That was weird. This is arguably what it would sound like if I was saying words, but that cannot be proven in a court of law. <clears throat> when you take several people of different... Uh, mechanical backgrounds and add them into one mechanical background that only takes one Michael Scott Vincent to discover that March was indeed a year. Okay, we've got working game. Um, so I'm just using uh, 192 beta 184 instead of 183. Uh, this is the file that, like, the version used for BA3, basically. I don't know why that matters. That's really, really fucking weird. I've never seen that before. There's lots of fireball cannons, and you just need some magic shield. Okay. 
I don't have the magic shield. I skipped on that purchase. I might regret that decision, but uh, we're gonna try without it, just for the sake of me making progress. Why am I cutting all these pots? Okay, so yeah, we're definitely getting ladder here, it looks like. And this is probably a uh, find which wall you're supposed to bomb room, and I'm guessing the answer is the left one. Yeah, that's definitely what this is. But are there multiple solutions? I don't think there's any way... Well, no, it could be a flag. I don't think it's either of these walls, but uh, I'll come back if I need to. Boo. Boo. You see that? Hold on. This left wall no longer matches up the walls don't actually turn properly. I know exactly why that is. I wasn't paying attention to that wall before I used the bomb. I'm guessing it was fine until I did. It's because... Actually, wait. Yeah, it is. It's because bombable walls pull from a 2x3 combo, like, cluster. And it, it, it did that because it basically had to. Oh well. Not a big deal, but uh, something worth pointing out, because I like pointing out random game mechanics. Also, we're back in the version of every time you push a block that is considered a push weight, it plays the uh, secret jingle and there's no way to disable it. Clearly the best era of gaming. Alright. There was a locked door somewhere, right? Yeah. I would like that map. Did I even get a compass in the line? Yeah, I think I did. Okay, so it looks like ladder and raft are both gonna be here. Or maybe just raft, actually. I assume ladder, but we'll see. Are you gonna be one of them? Yep, that would be the raft. Good old C set six so that those uh, green ropes can change to blue as soon as I get the blue ring, whenever that will be. Let me go get the map first, assuming that I'm able. Yep. I was fully expecting to hit that snake and uh, get knocked back onto the raft path. Alright, and compass. Is this dungeon's supposed to look like a jar. Okay, there has to be a reason why it sent me over here, so a bombable wall. Yes, indeed. I could probably leave and go buy a shield. I still don't want to do that, though. I've yet to have a reason to do that. The fireballs aren't that bad. Dungeon, uh, or rather this quest really likes using ropes for some reason. And is this find the magic block that works? A classic puzzle from NES Zelda, the likes of which I used many times because I'm an unoriginal bastard. There we go. I like how the answer to that was just hold left. So since it's been a while since I've really discussed this mechanic specifically, rafts in Zelda, the way they in Zelda Classic, the way they work is the uh, this is considered a dock combo, and basically when you're on a dock, it starts the rafting sequence if you have the raft, but then you have to have like a path drawn out using like flag eight, I think it is, and then um, like you can choose to just make it a straight line or like with no kind of like split pads or anything but you can make you can make branching pads by using a different flag and you can either choose to make these easily visible or not just depending on how much of a dick you are um so that one the answer was just hold left if it was me i probably would have made it stupid and be like oh you have to actually hold up 
know, or some stupid thing like that, but whatever. That's just because I'm an asshole. I don't know why I'm continuing to check. I found the only item in the room. I don't think there's any way to have more than one. Am I going to be pushing a bunch of blocks again? Surprisingly, no. However... No, okay. That's surprising. This is going to be a dead end, because there's no way this is the boss room, and there's no way it's going to actually lead to the Triforce room. Guess we're fighting us some Dogondos. Or sorry, Dogondabos. Uh, I don't know why I'm calling them that. I do what I want, you can't tell me what to do. Kill the bats for no reason. Oh boy, Zoras. Enemy that there is basically no reason to ever kill kills anyway. Making sure I've checked all the rooms. All right, what's the trick here? Is this actually a split path, or is it just making me think that it is? Uh, neither. It was just a kind of dumb way to get around. Okay. I'm noticing that despite this level having music from a puzzle game, it's pretty straightforward and not very puzzle heavy, at least compared to level one. So far I'm liking level one better. This one's also smaller. Okay, well I see the block I'm supposed to push. Get over there without getting uh, shot 15 times. So again, just making sure I didn't miss any rooms. Uh, have I been screened to the right of this? Yes, okay. I guess we're going back. Is that the rafting room? Ooh, we get to dodge the fireballs again. Somehow actually did. I'd love to know what, like, how close my hitbox was to getting hit there, because that was kind of uncanny. I should have figured there was something there. So yeah, if the boss is just Dogonda bows, then, uh, there's not really much to worry about with that. Unless there's also a bunch of statues. Which means I might have time to do another level after this, because I did want to stop after roughly an hour. I don't think there's any purpose to this screen, other than just like, yo, you need a key, go back. Oh, there were wall masters. Yeah, Dogondabos, yeah. Why do I keep calling them that? Yeah. Alrighty. Other than me uh, taking unnecessary recoil damage, that was not a problem. And there we go. So, where was I able to raft? I know there was a river. So we still can't go up here, that takes the ladder. That takes the ladder. Over to the right, somewhere over here, that took the hoot shot. I don't remember where there was more water. And then it turns out the ladder actually was in that dungeon, and I just missed it. It's possible. Oh, there's a raft. Let me actually do a save, just in case something bad happens. Also, since I never explained this, um, I didn't have to replay anything, as it should be obvious from the fact that I have other quests in the save file, because uh, I just copied it over to my 182 folder and it worked fine.
Okay, I'll play your game. <laughs> you think I'm gonna do this legit? Hell no. If you give me the option to damage boost, I will do it. Oh, random graveyard, okay. Um, well, let's do the traditional spawn a shit ton of guineas. Okay, that one's not spawning them, so that one's probably something I have to push. Spawn a shit ton of guineas and then kill the key master and get a bunch of stuff from it. A classic maneuver. What do you got? Oh. Okay, so this is the wooden sword. We now have an upgrade. Does it shoot beams? No, it doesn't. Brown. 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 Oh, not more of this shit. Curses. My need to ne unnecessarily damage boost into things that I'm not supposed to do yet has uh, caused unforeseen consequences. As I oh oh. That's fine. <laughs> In Harkinians, unfunny dick jokes cause unforeseen consequences. Link, I'm going to take a shit on the floor. That's enough of that. I like my uh, compulsive need to cut every single bush. And wake up every Armos for absolutely no reason. Okay, so yeah, this is this looks like it's a pretty speedy quest. Every dungeon uh, just kind of comes right after the previous with very little overworld in between. I usually like overworld stuff, but uh, I think I'm okay with this. Eh, we gotta try it. Also, that's some uh, that's some olive green water you've got going on there. Also, that's a fancy door. Is this gonna be a warp? What is this? Okay. So, I'm thinking. I actually don't know if you can just hand draw this and then have the shutter door appear above it, or if this had to be like a custom graphic that it pulled from for this particular map. I'll have to pay attention to the north facing doors. But, uh, so yeah, this is just a side warp into screen 81, it looks like. Or rather, a side warp to a different screen using the passageway, which pulls from screen 81. Okay. That looks like either a bombable wall on the right or a place where an item will spawn. It was uh, the former. Flute? Or no, these are hookshot points. I thought those were going to be fire shooters. Okay, so we're getting the hookshot here. Turns out I'm to get it right here. I didn't think we would. Screw it, I don't need your passageway. It's too slow. Okay, north-facing doors do not always have that uh, staircase graphic on them. So... Either shutter doors don't behave the way that I thought they did, because I thought, like, when you place a door within the program, it usually, like, let me, I kind of want to show this. It's stupid, but I kind of want to just show what I mean. When you place a door, it, uh, you have to choose which wall it comes from, and then it, like, you choose which one to do, and... Yeah, it kind of, like, it automatically places it, and where it gets this graphic from, in 192, it's defined by something that I don't remember. It's somewhere probably in, like, oh yeah, here we go, in door styles. Um, 
No, that's map styles. Where is it? Atmos, that's, uh, no. Yeah, here we go. So yeah, it like it tells it which ones to use. So here we have, so like a shutter and then an open shutter. So this one actually does have a distinction between just a normal passageway and an open shutter. So that's probably what that was. Maybe a shutter always opens up into that. I don't know if this is the same way that it works in 190 because 190 it doesn't have this like menu that you can go through. You just have to draw them onto screen 83 in a very specific way. It's kind of stupid. But anyway, enough of my technical talk. I am curious though. I'm going to keep an eye out for any other uh, north facing shutters. And I don't have a way of damaging you. Also, wait. Okay, now I'm fine. About to say, do I need the bow? If this is a passageway, it's a one-way, because if I come out, then I can't create that bridge again. So, alright. Oh, that would, uh, that would explain that then, okay. I noticed, uh, Link's holding up the item graphic there was floating above the ground of a couple pixels. How dare it not be perfect. Yeah, yeah, merge with the wall, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'm just like doing stupid shit. What was up here again? I'm kind of surprised you can actually hook shot a tile that's in the too wide border of a dungeon. Usually those blocks have weird properties that can't always be interacted with. But I think I've put, like, flag- or arrow flags on them, so... Yeah. Uh, what's the deal with this screen? Oh. What the hell? Okay. So does that mean we're getting the ladder here? Because I'm not sure how to get to that door. Why bother fighting Dark Knots when you can just do that? Okay, oh. Okay, I guess that makes sense. There's another one of those staircase things. It was not a shutter, though. I don't know why I'm obs obsessing over that so much. It's so stupid. Okay, we are getting the flute, apparently. Or whistle, or ocarina, or whatever you want to call it. The musical instrument of many different names. The thing what makes stuff happen occasionally. I would like to kill all the enemies on the screen just to make sure. Okay. And another passageway warp, okay. I mean, I should have expected that, it was stairs. Do we have a hidden key in one of the pots? walls. I'm very glad that there's some kind of indication. Ooh. Can I... I don't think I'm supposed to do this, but I probably could. I think I'd be able to latch onto that if I shot across there. Hmm. Let me not. Hold on. Is this a dead end if I keep going this way? Also, I missed a screen on the left, apparently. Okay, this requires fluid, obviously. Let me 
assuming it just dries the water once you cross. Okay. I had a moment there, because I'm like, what, the bird from Mega Man? And then I realized that that thing actually spawns when you use the flute in the Dr. Wily's Revenge quest, and that's just kind of an interesting coincidence. Okay, hookshot puzzle, let's go. Although puzzle might be putting it a little bit generously, but alright. I'm guessing this is going to lead to that dead end that had the flute in it. Yep. Also, I called it the flute, the whistle, and the ocarina, but I think in the Zelda 1 ent like, intro text it's actually called the recorder. So, yeah, this thing has like four different names. I just call it the flute because it's one syllable. Okay, so I could <coughs> I could progress back to that screen that required it, but uh, I kind of want to dick around with the hookshot stuff up here. I can definitely go this way. It's debatable if I can go to the right. I'm going to try after this. Also, I really need the bow. I'm finding that... Uh, the case more and more often here. Alright, I didn't realize I made it to the cave, but I guess so. And now we're just gonna loop them back, I guess. Okay, so... Wait, hold on, what happened there? Let me do that again. Why is there rubble down there? That's a bombable wall without any way of that being a bombable wall. That's weird. If I had been able to hookshot over here from that half tile, then I could have skipped a couple screens, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know what? I'm already here. Let's just do it. I'm going to get stopped by another locked door, probably, but whatever. <laughs> Cluster. to not get grabbed by the graboids here. Um, oh, okay, Th those were push weights. Were they? How the fuck? Do I seriously have to bomb through the wall from the screen to the left of this just to get five rupees? Or, no, that's probably 20. But my point remains valid. Well, if I'm back in the neighborhood, I'll do it anyway. Oh, goddammit. Yeah, merge with the wall. Didn't even mean to that time. So there was a bug in, like, I think, I swear it was in 190, but it might have been in, like, 184 or something, where you could, like, actually merge fully with a block if you hookshotted it from the right distance away and just kind of, like, wiggled your way into it. And so I had an area in Mitch that was only accessible if you did that, and it was basically just, like, a soft lock prevention mechanism. And I mentioned this during my old LP of it, but uh, I was never able to show it off because it doesn't work in the version that I'm able to record with. Um, 
but apparently, like, actual developers of Zelda Classic, like, were aware of that bug purely because I mentioned it, and they were, like, trying to recreate it for legacy reasons in a new version with, like, backwards compatibility. And, um, no one was able to find any footage of it existing or, like, any other mention of it, so I was specifically asked, and I'm like, fuck if I know, that was, like, 15 years ago. And, um, so they're just like, are there any quests that would require it? And I'm just like, probably not. In mine, it was just a random Easter egg. And they're like, okay, screw it, we're not gonna bother with that. I think Harrison's terrible had had quest might have also used it. But, uh, I don't remember. I know that at least the, like, NES version of that one did, because he originally made that. Oh, we've already seen the screen. Um, he already originally made that quest in the NES tile set and then updated it, kind of like I did with BA1. But, uh, that quest is really fucking bad. So, even if it was required, I don't think there would be any, uh, lost sleep over it not working. I think it was just for a bonus area, anyway. Oh, goddammit, I wanted to test this. Okay, can we do this? Yes, we can. Boss here is Dig Dogger because it's weak to defeat. Dig Dogger can be an issue because it does two hearts of damage every time you touch it, so I will attempt the usual cheese strategy. Might only create one kit also, but we'll see. Oh, no, 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 it's not more, it's not only one kit. Okay, that's fine. Cheese strategy always works. And thus we have level three, and uh... I don't know if I want to keep going. This has been a nice, like, surprisingly good quest that I could probably just kind of finish in, like, a couple hours. But, uh, I wasn't planning on finishing it, and I didn't want this video to be that long. So, I guess let me just go back and, uh, I'll see what level 4 looks like. I, I don't think I'm going to actually do it, though. So that was back in uh, Yonder Forest. Let me actually get the uh, upgraded shield, though. Because, you know, I'm not planning on doing the level, so clearly let's get extra equipment for it. Screw it, I can make this video a little longer. I don't think anyone, anyone will complain about that. <laughs> yeah, save warp. So wait, I'm curious. Oh, never mind, this is 184. I was gonna say, th is this quest gonna have that thing like BA2 where if you just start the game up and then immediately do a continue warp on the title screen, it fucks up? But, uh... I can't test that, because this version that I'm playing in currently, uh, fixes continue bugs. Or at least the major ones that I know how they work now. Alright, level four. That's not the song that's playing, but I don't care. Oh no, how can I possibly get the key? What the hell is this music? Oh, 
sure is just kind of a hole. Let's not make use of that new shield or anything. Let's just take as much damage as humanly possible. Oh, that's a that's a face. Okay. So what are you? You're definitely not a hookshot thing. Um let's see. There's no such thing as boomerang flags in 190. There's no wand flags. It might be an arrow thing. I'm not sure what that is. Wait, hold on. Was there? Oh, well, there was the bow. So yeah, that was definitely an arrow flag. Yeah, it's kind of weird what things have flags and what don't in 190. Because, like, in Zelda 1, like, the actual NES game, the only stuff that ever like, has interactability with your items that I can think of would be the, um, the bombs and the candle. Like, there's, there's places where you have to use the whistle, but that's kind of different. That's like a room state. That's not a flag. Um, and so, like, 190 has only a couple more than that. It has... God, what the... It, there's the specific whistle flags, which work differently from the Zelda 1 whistle mechanics. They're like two separate things. There's slash tiles that change to a new combo when you hit them with the sword, but they don't activate secrets. And there's arrow flags, and that's pretty much it. There's like... You can't use the wand for secrets. You can't use the hammer. There, it's kind of limited on what you can do. Was that path open before and then I messed it up by shooting the target? Yes? Okay. Well, screw it. Let's go that way anyway. Random dark room. Okay. Dark rooms or even a thing. They're kind of useless. Dude. Holy shit. Uh, can we not die, please? Was there anything in this screen? I think there was bombs in the wall. Or in the pots. I was expecting to get grabbed by the ghoulies here. That did not happen. Also, there's another instance of the wall fucking up because I used a bomb. And, yeah, let's just save warp. I need to get my health back. Done? I don't know. Probably. What the fuck are these? Are these bomb wall? No. I don't know what those are. Those are weird looking. Okay, I guess they're burnable. Wait, since when does the hookshot kill keys? I thought it just stunned them. When's, when was that a thing? Weird. And I don't know what to do on this screen. Okay, it's not whistle. Uh, this might be a comeback from the north screen. Yeah, I guess, I guess it would have to be. Except, yeah, you come in, you shoot there, you shoot that thing, it probably makes a bridge. Okay. I have to keep telling myself to look at the actual game window and not the preview screen, because the preview screen is laggy as hell. It's throwing me off. I'm probably missing a bunch of bombable screens. There are, like, secret rooms also, but... 
you know. This looks like the red candle. Is it actually? Yes, it is. No blue candle in this game. I am quite okay with this. The blue candle kind of sucks. Have I seen anything else in the level that required this yet? I don't remember. Quest is making a surprising use of the hookshot. I always had a tendency to like require it in like maybe one level and then just kind of forget about it. Oh god. Is this going to be magic boomerang? Except didn't we already have two items in this level already? Did we? Yeah, the bow and the red candle. I guess we have three in this dungeon. Okay. Interesting uh, distribution there. Yeah, stealth those two, yeah. Ooh, and we got boomerang sparkles. Not that that really does anything, but I always like those. I'm tempted to see if you can bomb into the wall. I'm, no, no, you wouldn't be able to from this part of the screen. Yeah, fucked up wall. Okay, that's a red bubble. That's a mandatory sword loss. Um, hold on. That is bombable. What the hell? There's rubble there. Are, are you sure? Bullshit it is. You can't do anything with that. That was weird. Anyway. Mandatory sword loss, let's go. Because I don't have the fire boomerang, so I can't stun it, and I don't have potions, so I can't get rid of it, so I can't, like, heal the curse. And now what? Oh, okay. What's with this random rubble? Why is it cute? Is it... Is it doing that because there's rubble in the screen below this and it's like loading that as it scrolls? Maybe? That's really weird. I mean, I guess there's no reason you couldn't just set that wall to be bombable and then not have it be accessible anyway. Like, it... It's kind of sloppy to do that, but it's not a problem if the player can't interact with it. I don't know, it's just kind of weird. I should not be complaining about sloppiness when this game has had a much higher caliber of quality than my quests. Blue bubble sometime soon? No, this is uh, another red one. I mean, I guess I've got the hammer. I don't really need a sword. Let's go this way first. I think this is just going to lead to 20 rupees that I spawned earlier. Oh, there's another door, so maybe not. So far, this is the uh, most interesting of the dungeons, minus possibly the first. The first one was still, like, surprisingly well done. I am continuously uh, impressed by that one. Okay. Don't know how to get that heart piece. Has there been one heart piece per level up to this point? I've not been paying attention. Too many options, I don't know which way to go. Is the game gonna ever give my sword back? <laughs> I like that double kill, that was good. 
I cannot check what's under these pots. Because those pots are slash combos. Oh, and I can't... Actually, can I choose the Dodongo? Does he die to Hamber? Hamber. Yo, Hamber. Yo. Yo, come back. I, I want to try and cheese you. I, I can't if you're going to be doing whatever the hell this is. Okay. Nope. Okay. He only dies to the sword, apparently. Oh, thank you. So, Goma, probably. Okay, I'm above an eyeball. Can I bomb into the eye? That's a, uh, that's a damn shame. So is there any point to going over here? Okay, yeah, I guess there was. Maybe this is the heart base. song is. I think Castlevania. Something from the first game. <laughs> More random rubble. Okay, yeah, that, that, that was on the north wall and there's rubble. And I, I'm convinced now that that's why it's doing that. I wonder if that's like a 182 specific thing. Or not 184. Whatever version I'm playing. I, I don't fucking remember. Zelda Classic 1.92 1 Beta 184 is the technical name for it. And that's a key that I need to get. What did that what did that do? Did that just open the door? I think it did. Using a lot of bombs in this place. <laughs> Asshole. So what, is the, is the blue bubble going to be, like, in the Triforce room? Is Frank Stallone just in the Bigfoot suit? Dude. Magic Boomerang is a blessing and a curse, because, like, if you miss, it usually takes longer to come back to. Oh, good. Blue Dark Nuts, just what I wanted to see. Not that they're particularly hard to deal with when I have the hammer, but still. Oh, okay, and they do have shieldless icons. Or tiles, or graphics, or sprites, or whatever you want to call them. I guess I've not really skipped any screens. I feel like there were a bunch of split paths a while ago that I still never tried one of them of the is paths of is the. I can't open that chest. I don't have a sword. That's a problem, because I assume that chest has a key and I need it. This is not a blue bubble, so I don't know how to get my sword back. Um, I guess we're going to go back and check all the split paths until I find it. We've been up there. I think we've done everything up this way. Yeah, this led over to the, uh, the room with the hint. And I think that was it. I mean, there's always the possibility of more random bombable walls, but I'm not quite that desperate yet. Try it. I probably already tried that one before. That was a waste of a bomb. Yeah, this just leads to the hint room. We don't need to go this way. Turns out I actually saw the blue bubble in a room a long time ago and just never hit it. Would not be sh shocked if that was the case. Don't need to 
do anything here. Have I gone up from here? Yeah, that was how I got the key earlier. I don't... Th yeah, we've not been up from here. Is this just going to be a single room with a blue bubble and nothing else? Oh. Okay, well, I think that restores your sword. Yes, it does. If only I had checked that a long time ago. Oh well. What can you do? I take no responsibility for that. up in a timely manner, and then we can uh, all move on with our lives. I'm guessing the next uh, quest showcase is not going to uh, go as long as this one, because I'm probably going to pick a quest that is uh, really bad on purpose, because bad things are funny. I would like to not be dying. That would be... Uh, a good thing to have happen. So yeah, we've been over there. Oh yeah, we need to go over there to get the key. Never mind. I wonder if that was intentional for this room to require the sword and then like make you have to go back and get it if you didn't already. Cleared out most of the level. Just a couple screens left. I really hope I can get some health soon. Do Vyres ever drop stuff? I'm not sure if they do, because Vyres, if you if they take less than four damage in a single hit, they split into keys. But because the hammer does four damage, they're instantly dying. Okay. trick to this. The trick is that one of them was fake. That's a Big Dips adventure puzzle. Oh boy, more of these assholes. I don't have to deal with them, but I'm going to anyway. So has every level up to this point just had Wallmasters in the room before the boss? Because that's kind of a dick move. And yeah, Goma. Pretty much what I expected. Not even a bunch of statues randomly shooting at you, or spike traps, or like falling boulders, or all of the above, or also fill the room with like nine blue dark nuts. But we're not playing Isle of the Winds, so that's not going to be the case here. And I believe that wraps up level four, and thus wraps up this video, and probably everything I'm ever going to see of this game. So, to nobody's surprise, my, uh, synopsis of this one, or rather my, like, ending opinion on it, it was pretty good. Considering that it's from freaking 2002 and that it's made in 190, this is a surprisingly, uh, well-constructed quest. It isn't super amazing. It doesn't have, like, any world-changing gimmicks or ideas in it, but it's a hell of a lot better than I was expecting it to be. Um, the jive gimmick was uh, not seen very much. I expected a lot more. Um, because that's how it's described on the database, is that it, like, it's just a Zelda quest, but with, like, Ebonics. And I was expecting it to be fairly dialogue-heavy and just kind of, like, light-hearted, jokey quest. Kind of like there's this old one called Mario's Insane Rampage that's, like, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, but with Mario, and it was, like, super gory and stupid. <laughs> I was kind of expecting something like that, but uh, I think what I got was actually better. So, yeah, uh, I am 18 years late, but uh, good job to uh, Wild Bill for making this. Also, her.